Shalom, all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakah Kadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders, the great millstone that rule well through the scriptures. Peace to the 144,000 and the rest of the hopeful elect on the brother Kaya from GMS Indianapolis. The other two branches of GMS Indiana is GMS Gary and GMS Bloomington. I just want to do a quick response to this image you see on screen now. <clears throat> Pardon me for the background noise. I'm at work. Took a, got a little quick little break or whatever. But uh, what you see on screen was supposed to be some type of a performance or a show at the Olympics. Now, I heard about it. I didn't see it personally. But what you see is supposed to be some type of mockery as it pertains to the Last Supper right now we know the last supper was when you know basically it's a painting now the scriptures uh basically when you see the image of the last supper what they're alluding to is the passover that passover that uh yahweh shah had with his disciples before he was to be um delivered and offered up and then eventually crucified that's what that's alluding to, all right? And uh, my, my thing is that you notice that they always mock. They always uh, uh, defile the Holy Scriptures, the Bible. See, you got a lot of different religions out there, but you don't see them mocking them and defiling them and, you know, to the same extent. I remember some years ago, maybe about 10 plus years ago, there was supposed to be a play over there in Europe, uh, some playwright. He wrote a play in which Muhammad, all right, the so-called messenger in, in, in uh, Islam, all right, in the Quran, they supposedly was going to show his face, all right, and that's supposed to be sacrilegious. All right, according to Muslims or whatever, to show Muhammad's face. That's like a one of the most biggest deals. And it was a it was outrage, man. It was outrage just to show his face. But look at but look at this though. And then they got a come on man. You see? So with that being said, first scripture. This is second Thessalonians, the second chapter. All right. Matter of fact, I'll start at the top. Second Thessalonians 2 and 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and by our gathering together unto him. So Yahweh Shai is on his way. And while he's on his way, we are gathering ourselves together unto him by learning his word and by readying ourselves as best we can spiritually, arming ourselves spiritually to to prepare ourselves for his coming that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by words nor by letter as from us as that the day of Hamashiach is at hand so don't let uh certain circumstances let your faith waver at the end of the day you know that this is going to happen you know that Yahweh is going to return you know you believe you're going to return. You know he's going to return. This place got to go. All right? And all, all signs, everything point to this place just got to go. <laughs> all right? Let no man deceive you by any means. Yeah, you got different people coming up with different doctrines. All right? Things that was contrary to what you once learned or you once was taught that might make a little sense. But hey, if it ain't a hundred, if it don't make a hundred percent sense, then it ain't right. The scripture says no lie is of the truth. So you can't have a little truth and a little lie and combine them. The whole thing becomes a lie at that point. It says, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Right, the falling away of what us us falling away from this knowledge that had to happen first see how do we fall away from the knowledge through being scattered 
all right, amongst all these other nations through various captivities. And then ultimately that great captivity with the, the, the transatlantic slave trade, we still have remnants of being Israelites. Our people were singing. When you, when you look at them old Negro spirituals, why is our people always talking about Israel and the River Jordan? You don't hear, you don't hear them talking about heaven. You don't, look, I, was, I used to sing in a choir. I'm well versed with Negro spirituals personally, a bunch of them. And we never, we, the Negro spirituals never talked about the kingdom of, well, the, uh, there's one that talks about uh, the chariots. There's one that talks about the chariots. It says, good news, the chariots coming, and I don't want you to leave me behind. There are silver slippers in the heavens, I know. That's the only Negro spiritual where they talk about heaven. But all the Negro spirituals are always talking about Israel. Because our people still had inklings of who we were. We didn't have it all the way, but we had somewhat and somewhat of the knowledge and what, and what happened. Esau beat that out of us. He beat the remainder out of us. The remainder, out, you know, what little knowledge and information we had left. All right, so we fell away from who we were as Israelites. And, we, and, and that means we fell away from our culture because our worship, our God, what we believe in is surrounded by our culture. All right, our practices, our language. That's why it's imp that's why it was always imperative for this devil to get us away from our culture and customs. All right. First Maccabees two and no first Maccabees one. Now, first Maccabees is in the time of something called the Hellenization period, which Hellenization was when the Greeks were in power after after the death of, of Alexander and one in particular, um, Antiochus. Some say Antiochus, but it's I believe it's actually Antiochus. All right. He was a Greek and everyone under his authority, he was compelling and forcing them to leave their customs and adopt Greek fashions under penalty of death. All right. So it says, 1 Maccabees 1 and 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yeah, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. So... That was the, uh, he was trying to come up with a, a, a one world government right then and there. Right? But it just wasn't time yet. And the thing was, our people consented and agreed. Look, you, there, there's always sellouts. There's always people who want crumbs right now. All right? They want instant gratification now, regardless of any cost. All right? Let me see. We'll get back to the point. Uh, uh, First Maccabees 1 and 11. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us, for since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So this device pleased them well. So you, that's the go along to get along. The people that want to assimilate. All right. The people that don't want to disagree. That don't want to stand up for righteousness. That don't want to suffer and be, you know, looked at a certain way or perceived a certain way. All right. So now with Esau Edom, the so-called white man. At the helm, he's up the ante from the time of the Greeks. Now you have to agree with this, which that was a part of his ways then. We always associated sexual sexual perversion is always since before I even knew about the truth or was in the truth. It was common knowledge that sexual perversion was always associated with Greeks and Romans. 
Okay? So now, if you speak against this, and you have an opinion against this, then you can be demonized. You can be publicly disgraced. But back to what I said, if you want to do something like this, why must you use the Bible? Why do, why do they always... Why do they always use the Bible, mock it and turn it to a, a, a joke, say it ain't real, if it is real, God, is he white or whatever? Well, back to the Thessalonians. We went all the way around the world to come back, Salakia. It says, uh, verse 4, this is the point. I'll read uh, 3 again. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. So the man of sin is being revealed. All right? It's a particular man. And it's, it's actually a race of people. It just so happened that the leadership of that race of people is the, is the you know, they're the ones pulling the string, but this falls, this, this, this falls on the whole race. All right? Because the soul that, is, that are in them is not upright. All right? It says, the son of perdition who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. So he has a, perpetual beef with the most high he is the enemy of righteousness now let's look up opposes that's why they always mimic uh you know mock and disrespect the bible in particular because he don't care about no worship of faith thing uh if we being honest he don't be he, he he don't believe in that all right but the one he got a, a, a vendetta against is the God of the Bible. He's the enemy of the God of the Bible. All right, let's look up the word opposed. Anti, see, you see that anti in the, in the beginning. I'll play it. Strong G480. Antikamai. 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 Look, to be set over against, opposite to. See, he's opposite to anything biblical. Because the Bible is the author where well, the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, in the name of his son, they, is the author of morality and righteousness. So now the world has been led so far astray from morality and righteousness that we're at the point we're at now. Where now righteousness is what you see before you. This is righteousness. And if you speak out against this, you're evil. You're bad. That's why the scripture says, Isaiah, uh, what is that? Isaiah 5. And 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So you changing everything. You, you flipped everything upside down. And you called it good. You called the sweet bitter. The words we teach, what we telling people to do is good for them to do. It's good, you know, for them righteously. It's good for them physically. It's good for your health. It's good for your health not to cut your, take to take certain pills all right to have your hormones haywire yeah you think it's good right now in the beginning but then 10 15 20 years down the line you got that regret and now you can't reverse none of those actions that you took see see they put bitter for sweet and light for dark see they told you that was light and they told you that was sweet but yeah you yeah take that on upon yourself and you're gonna find death and misery that's why the bible say they that hold his side do find it yeah, you choose his side. You're going to find death. All right? You're going to find misery, agony. Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 24. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. Yeah. That, uh, that, uh, uh, Cain. And, and, and the serpent. All right? Because the serpent envied Adam. And he came with that, 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 that false doctrine that he, he touted as light. And then when Adam and Eve took that on, it became, it became darkness. He gave it to him from sweet, 
And then and when they took it on, it, yeah, it was sweet in the beginning, but overall it was bitter. And in that day, Adam died, right? Because a day to the Lord is a thousand years. And Adam didn't reach that, that, that thousand years. He died at 930. All right? Same thing with, with, with Cain. He envied Abel. He envied Abel, and through his envy, he physically killed his brother. All right? See, see, he got to see, he has a vendetta against the most high. This, see, there was a spirit, there was a spirit within him which influences him to behave and act and respond this way. And there's a spirit within us Israelites, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, which influence us to behave and respond the way we do naturally without his interference. So that's why it's imperative for him to constantly interfere, constantly bombard us to, 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 to have us grow up and believe his way is best. So we won't even have no remembrance of righteousness. It says, and they that do hold of his side do find it yeah so you yeah you choose him you see what happened it says opposite to to oppose be adverse to to withstand so whatever the bible say right he gonna say wrong and vice versa all right uh my break is waning but let me um let me grab some this is uh first maccabees three and four and laid open the book of the law. What's the book of the law? The Bible. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So even around this time, all right, they were taking our Bibles, taking out the book of the law and, and changing the images because human beings look at images. Now, you ain't supposed to worship the image and praise the images, but people... Images tell a story. Images give an account. You know? So we had images of our forefathers. You know, you might have... The, the, the scriptures describe them. All right? The scripture speaks about Aaron's beard going down to his feet. The scripture speaks about Elisha being bald. The scripture speaks about uh, uh, David being beautiful. Okay? Uh, 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 Absalom uh, was beautiful too with the with the with the big afro. How do we know it was a fro? Because he was riding a horse and he got caught in some trees by his hair. You so-called white people, y'all hair don't grow like that. See, it's various different images, the uh, illustrations that give you an idea, and they know that. So that's why they that's why they always change the most highs color and make them look white. All right. Make them, you know, and then they tell you color don't matter. Well, that's how people think. When you close your eyes, if I, like if like if we having this come, I'm doing this lesson right now. And if I say Jesus, then when you hear that, you're going to think of the images you saw. A, a, a so-called white man with, a, with blue eyes, blonde hair, with this little very pacified, nice look. All right. And you're going to equate that with him being a son of the Lord. OK. But now they so forward with it, they, they exceeded painting the images. Now they don't they don't went here with it. Total disrespect. But when the Lord come with that fire. Likened unto Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and World War Three with the, the devastation he's going to bring this place, then everybody's going to be crying and everybody's going to be talking about uh, it's so unfair and if, if there was a God, then he wouldn't let people know. No. Because y'all chose ways in which he didn't delight in. All right? Let me see if it's more on this to finish this Thessalonians. You know, wrap up. It says, uh, who opposed it and exalt himself above all that is called God, so he go against it, or that is worshipped, right, so the, the, the proper way you supposed to worship the Most High, he go against that, so that he as the Most High sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So he gets you to, to, to cast away what you believe in, and you believe in him. You get all that to him. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things, this Paul speaking to the Thessalonians, all right, Israelites living in Thessalonica, 
And, you know, see, it's a citizenship thing. They weren't heathens. They was, like, if a Mexican moved to America, and you, he's a Mexican-American, he's, he's still a Mexican by nationality. It's a citizenship thing. We ain't African-Americans, we Israelites. All right? And they ain't Mexicans. They the tribe of Issachar. But just to give you the example, you know, it says, remember ye not that when I was with, that when I was yet with you, I told you, told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. So now is the time. That's why we talking about him. See, you can say, see, it's one thing to, to speak about this man, right? And to uh, bring out his atrocities and everything, his wrongdoing. You know, like Dr. Umar Johnson, he, he's good. Uh, uh, Thomas Sowell, he, he got good information. Um, other, other, other uh, the Neely Fuller, Tariq Nasheed, other guys who goes into, you know, this devil's crimes but no one equates it with the bible and that's what gives it the power and that's what gives you the whole rundown all right that that gives you the who what when where how why the ins and outs and that's what he's afraid of and that's what he's you know it's the only weapon against him so anyway with that lord willing this was an edifying lesson to the whole free let all praises glory and honor to you how about shim yahushai